Hello, and welcome to another ICS Impulse video. Before you get started on this video, it is best that you review the training DVD that came with the ICS Impulse system, or view this same video on icsimpulse.com under See How It Works. What this video is going to offer you is more tips for performing head impulse, basically things that I've learned out in the field watching people learn how to do head impulses, so a few more tips to help you be successful. Let's talk about proper head rotation. First, it must have a high velocity. The sweet spot is 150 to 200 degrees per second. So when you're doing your head impulse, you want to have the majority of your head impulses between 150 and 200. You want to have varying velocities. It should be passive, so obviously you're the one performing the head impulse on the patient. And it should be unpredictable. Why is unpredictable important? Why do we not want the patient to be able to anticipate the head impulse? Well, we don't want the patient to try to compensate for their disorder. Randomizing head impulse direction mainly affects the catch-up saccade pattern. If the head impulses are completely predictable, patients will do better in making covert saccades or compensating for their disorder. In order to show the deficit, which is the purpose of the test, it's better to randomize the order. ICS Impulse. It's bringing diagnostic accuracy and efficiency into balanced testing. We want to make sure you perform the test properly so that you have accurate diagnostic results as well. As you see here in the picture, the new powerful gold standard for vestibular ocular reflex, the ICS Impulse, was built on the work of Drs. Himagi and Kurthois. Impulse is the only device validated against scleral search coils at the time of this video. What you see here is the ICS impulse goggles and then in on the patient's eye is the coil and then the bite bar to measure the patient's head movement and then you see here the full system being set up so that they were simultaneously collecting coil data along with goggle data. There are several components that make collecting head impulses possible with this device. The first thing that's important is the fact that they're lightweight goggles. They're only 60 grams. You want lightweight goggles because you don't want the goggles to slip during head impulse testing. The high speed camera at 250 hertz is very important for picking up those catch-up saccades. Built-in dual access gyroscope is obviously measuring the head movement. No slippage with a secure fit. Again, no slippage is very important. Superior software-based pupil detection to make sure that the pupil is always detected so that you can capture those catch-up saccades. And last thing is software algorithms that identify good head impulses and good data. And there's two algorithms in here, and we've we will talk about those two algorithms in more detail in the analysis video, but there are two algorithms in the system that assure that good data is collected and therefore only good data is analyzed. Let's talk now about ICS Impulse versus Visual Observation. Why is ICS Impulse superior to Visual Observation? Well, ICS Impulse can identify covert catch-up saccades. It validates that the head impulse is performed properly. Both sensitivity and specificity are 95% for ICS Impulse, and sensitivity is estimated at 70% for Visual Observation. Reduction of false negatives. Again, you don't want to be missing those covert catch-up saccades and saying that the patient is normal because you couldn't see the covert catch-up saccades. So you're identifying patients as normal who are truly abnormal when you use visual observation. With ICS Impulse, you identify both the overt and the covert catch-up saccades and don't misidentify anybody. Objective analysis with normative data. It's documented head impulse test results. So you have documentation that the test was done and this was the results instead of just a handwritten note, which you would have with visual observation. And better patient comfort during testing. When you're doing visual observation, you have to do quite large head impulses. And what I've seen out in the field with neurologists who currently do visual observation is their head impulses when they start to use ICS impulse are over 300 degrees per second. With ICS Impulse, you don't need to make that big of a head movement, and you shouldn't make that big of a head movement because actually with ICS Impulse, that big of a head movement causes artifacts. So you want to keep your head impulses in that 150 to 200 degrees per second. So everybody who's out there doing visual observation, you need to slow down and do smaller head impulses. Obviously, smaller head impulses means that patient comfort is increased. 
So the smaller the head impulse, the more comfortable the test is for the patient. Let's talk about goggle fit. When you get ready to place the goggles on the patient, you need to make sure you obtain a new face cushion. Face cushion is single use only. If you've reused the face cushion and you have an old face cushion which looks limp or the foam is not adhering to the plastic part of the insert, this will result in slippage. So you need to make sure that you have a good quality face cushion when you're doing the testing. Again, it's intended that these are single use. You need to make sure you secure the goggles, making sure the strap is tight and the goggles do not slip. Goggle slippage again results in artifacts in the data. And then the other thing that's very important is there's a clip on the cable that should allow you to clip the cable that comes from the goggles to the interface box onto the patient's shoulder or onto their collar. You definitely want to clip this cable on there. Anytime you're doing head impulses and that cable is hanging there without being clipped to the patient, the pulling on that cable can cause movement of the goggles and cause slippage. So it's very important that you clip that cable to the patient's shoulder. Again, all of these things, this is just reiterating some things that I saw people were not performing even after viewing the training video, but these are important aspects of performing a good head impulse test. Again, you can view the full training video on icsimpulse.com. One other thing regarding the training video on icsimpulse.com, this training video is available in English and German, and it's subtitled in French, Spanish, and Italian. So let's look at goggle fit again. If you can look here and see where the arrows are pointing, you see there's gaps between the patient's face and the actual foam cushion. That's a bad goggle fit. If the goggles fit the patient like this picture, you're at risk that the goggles will slip during head impulse testing. What you can try to do is take out the face cushion and use the goggles um, without the face cushion and see if they adhere to the patient's face more appropriately. In my experience with the ICS impulse system, it's very rare to find a patient that the foam cushion fits in this manner, but I want you to be aware of it. It's always a good idea to look at the top of the patient and look to the side of the patient and make sure that foam cushion is fitting appropriately to the patient's face. Here's an example of a proper goggle fit. You can see there's no gaps from the side or from the top, so that face cushion is adhering to the patient's face. And this is what we see most of the time with most patients. Now let's talk about patient setup and testing. The patient must be at least one meter from the fixation dot. Why is that? Having a very close target activates convergence. The eyes have to cross in order to look at the dot. Activation of convergence system may interfere with vestibular ocular reflex. In addition, a close target adds a linear component. The eyes move sideways relative to the dot. This effect becomes smaller with increasing distance of the target. So that's why it is recommended that the patient be at least one meter away from the fixation dot. You can easily find that answer again on the frequently asked questions as well. You also want to make sure you never touch the goggles or the strap when performing the head impulse test. If you move the goggles during the test, you can move the camera, resulting in a camera losing track of the pupil. This would result in potentially missing catch-up saccades. Again, never touch the goggles or the strap when performing the head impulse test. Now let's talk about calibration. As you know, on the impulse goggles, there is a built-in calibration laser, so no extra equipment is needed. Calibration is important, and you want to make sure the patient is performing the task appropriately. You can watch their eye on the screen and make sure that they are truly looking at the right dot and the left dot. You want to make sure when you instruct them that they understand that they should be looking at the red dots. Instead of what we've seen, <laughs> before with some facilities is the clinician asks the patient to look left and they don't realize they need to be looking at the left dot and they're looking far off to the left side. So you want to make sure your patient is performing the task appropriately. Always, always, always calibrate each individual patient. If a patient cannot cognitively perform the task or see the laser dots, then you can take the default calibration. But the default calibration should only be used if the patient cannot be calibrated. But if the calibration list looks suspect, then always go back to that calibration tab and recalibrate the patient. Again, you can refer to the training video to show you more information on calibration. 
Okay, let's go into the ICS Impulse Otosuite V software. And the first thing I want to point out is obviously you want the pupil within the box. If you have a patient who has quite a bit of mascara on, it is best to remove the mascara. But if you don't have mascara remover, what you can do is lower the region of interest box so that it's right below where the eyelashes are. Now the algorithm is built so that it looks for a circular dark area, which is the pupil and the lashes will not interfere very much, but it really depends on how much mascara and really dark eyeliner the patient has on. So if they have a lot of really dark makeup on and you don't have the ability to get them to take it off, then it's best if you just lower your ROI a little bit below where that makeup is. Okay, you can always tell if the patient is cooperating during calibration by looking at the green line in the real-time samples, that's the eye trace, and also watching the pupil in the video window, the white dot in the black background. The first thing we're going to do is turn on the lasers. You want to make sure the patient has the fixation dot centered in between the lasers. You also want to make sure that the patient is looking straight ahead and not off to the side. So it's very important you pay attention to what the patient is doing. Once the patient has the fixation dot centered between the two laser dots, then click Run Calibration. Before you click Run Calibration, make sure you've instructed the patient. Patient, the dot, you're going to look at the right dot, and then you're going to look at the left dot, and then back at the right dot, and then back to the left dot. Are you ready? Okay, we're going to click Run Calibration. So if you notice, by looking in the video window, the patient's looking right, then left, and you can see the pupil moving back and forth, right and left. If the pupil moves outside of the ROI, they're obviously not looking at the laser dot. Now let's talk about data collection in Otosuite V. So you notice that the minimum number of head impulses are 20 to the left and 20 to the right. Obviously, once you get better at doing head impulses, then you can lower that number. But that number was recommended by Hamagi and Kerthoys as a good number to start with when you're first starting out doing head impulses. If you want to lower that number and permanently change it, if you go under the Options tab, you can do that. Now, how do you assure you're doing proper head impulses? You want to make sure that you hold tightly to the head. You can do this in one of two ways. I have a tendency to push down at the palms and then hold at the tips of the fingers. Some people like to hold more at the tips of the fingers. But you want to make sure you hold onto the head firmly when you are doing your head impulses because you are going to want to do a short amplitude, so from point A to point B. You don't have to move the head very much, only from 10 to 20 degrees, but you want to make it quick, 150 to 200 degrees per second. If you think about it, it's like rolling a pencil in your hand. You will push with one hand and pull with the other hand. So when you do a head impulse, hold on firm and quickly move the head. Hold it there and then move the head back to center. It is a quick, abrupt motion. Then you notice from here to here is not much of an amplitude. It does not have to be a very big amplitude. Even with this very small amplitude, the cameras are more sensitive than the naked eye and can pick up an overt or covert catch-up saccade with a small 10 degree or 20 degree amplitude. But also notice that as we move from here to here, it is a fast movement, 150 to 200 degrees per second. If you have never done head impulses before, you are going to need to practice. It is best not to practice on the patient. This looks a little odd, but you can be creative. You can get a melon from the grocery store or use a ball. And what you can do is set up the ICS impulse system so that it does not track the eye at all. Make sure you slide the auto threshold over and make sure it is not picking up any noise. Click default for the calibration, then practice your head impulses on your fictitious patient. So do your head impulses and actually see your head impulses in the lateral window screen. Don't be alarmed if the data doesn't analyze or very few head impulses actually analyze because the analysis algorithm actually looks at the head movement as well as the eye movement. So a lot of your head impulses when you practice will be rejected because you don't have any eye movement. When you're doing your head impulse, you want to make sure you're looking at the real-time window. This window allows you to monitor both head in red and eye in green while performing the head impulse test. Same window we looked at when we were monitoring the eye during calibration. Why is the real-time window important? 
It assists in identifying if spontaneous nystagmus is present, assists in identifying if the patient is cooperative and staring at the fixation dot. If the patient's looking around everywhere, you'll see the green line will not be smooth. It'll be moving up and down. Assist in identifying if the patient is staring at the fixation dot at the end of the head impulse. Again, are they maintaining fixation on that fixation dot or are they looking around? It is important the patient keep looking at the fixation dot, keep their gaze stable, and do not blink during the head impulse test. An eye blink will look like a spike in the real time trace window. The other window, the lateral impulse window, is also very important. The head trace is displayed in red with negative velocities if the movement is towards the right. The head trace is displayed in blue with positive velocities if the movement is towards the left. The eye trace is still represented in green and white dots display along the y-axis to indicate the velocities of impulses collected. So again, if you look at these white dots, they're between 100 and 200. That's good. You want most of your impulses to be between 150 and 200. That's the sweet spot. Why is the lateral impulse window important? It assists the user in performing good head impulses by comparing head impulse data to the gray training curves. Displays velocities of head impulses collected, which helps tester know they are varying the velocity. It is very important that the physician technician performs proper head impulses. There should be no more than approximately 20 rejects. It is recommended that the physician or technician practice prior to testing patients. And physicians who perform head impulse using visual observation will have to be retrained. They typically, again, are used to doing head impulses at a velocity above 300, and we want a velocity between 150 and 200. So in the past, inappropriate administration of the test and clinician subjectivity in determining if a saccade was present led to limited clinical usage of this quick, simple test. Why is ICS impulse superior in ensuring proper head impulses are performed? You've got all these training videos that properly explain how to do a proper head impulse. You've got the training curves, which, which assist the physician or technician in understanding what a proper head impulse should look like. And then you've got the two algorithms, the collection and analysis algorithm that analyze the data and accept proper head impulses. Only good data is analyzed, and that's very important. And remember, you can always learn more about ICS Impulse and Otisuite V on icsimpulse.com, and you can learn more about the research behind the head impulse test and see what courses are being offered, where people are speaking on head impulse on headimpulse.com. So both sites are very useful.